Romans chapter 1. <clears throat> Romans chapter 1. Starting at verse number 21. Are you there? Because that when they knew God, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and to four-footed four -footed beasts and creepy things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Meditate on this. Look to your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. It's time to stop the madness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Stop the madness. Now, y'all know what happened before. So, y'all know that it's time for him to release what he gave. Amen. Amen. This year, the NCAA men's basketball tournament has been amazing. Anybody been watching? So many close games, so many nail biters, so many last second wins, so many shocking endings. So many surprising endings. It's been March Madness at its best. It's been March Madness at its finest manifestation. But who would have ever thought that the final four would be the final four? And, and who would have ever thought that the final two would be the final two? Who would have ever thought that tomorrow night at 9.20 p.m. that the national championship would be between Texas Tech and... And me and First Lady's alma mater. UVA, the first time in the history of the school believe that we ever made it this far. Amen. But who would have ever thought that some of the more prominent and more dominant teams would not be in the championship? And after tomorrow night, when the championship is over, the 2019 NCAA champions will be crowned and the tournament will be over. All the hype, over. All the games will be over for the season and, and March Madness will be ended. <laughs> And as good as this tournament has been, and as exciting this tournament has been, it's been amazing last second layups missed. Last second tip-ins missed. Last second three points made. Last second three points missed. And the last three free throws made. 
this great terminal must come to an end. And the ending will be tomorrow night, the March of Madness. <laughs> Somebody said, thank you, Lord. <laughs> they might get their TV back. Amen. <laughs> and March Madness for 2019 will finally stop, but there is another type of madness that also needs to stop. This madness has, doesn't have anything to do with basketball and the tournament bracket. This madness doesn't have anything to do with the Tar Heels, the Blue Devils, or the Cavaliers. This madness has to do with what the world has done. This madness has to do with what Satan has tricked mankind into doing. This madness had to do with you and me. This madness uh, has to do with what you, who today society and culture is worshiping and serving. This matter had to do with what uh, is number one in our hearts. This madness has to do with our priorities, our passions, our commitments, our worship, our service, and our sacrifice. This madness is revealed in Romans chapter 1 and has to stop. So today I have to preach the message called Stop the Madness. For in our text, Paul is explaining the condition of the world and humanity during his day and humanity today. Somebody say today. He is teaching us what happens when people reject God. He is teaching us what happens when humanity rejects God. He is teaching us what happens when we do, when we don't put God in his proper place in our lives. He's teaching us what happens when we don't put God first, first, first. Somebody say first. For Paul says in verse 21, he declares when they knew God. When they knew God, they knew there was a God. They knew God was real. Minister Thomas Wade said, people talk about all the time last week, I know God, I know God. They knew God, but they glorified him not as God. Church, make no mistake about it. Just because you believe in God doesn't mean that you live for God. Just because you believe in God doesn't mean that you are honoring him with your life. Just because you believe in God does not mean that you are a son or a daughter of the Most High God. For the Bible says in James chapter 2 verse 19 that even demons believe and tremble. Even devils, even demons believe. The devil know God more than you do. And the devil know the consequence of defying and ignoring God. Amen? Because it's not just about what you believe in your head, but it's about what you surrender to in your heart and live out in your life. And it's not about who you know, but it's about who knows you. Just because you know who somebody is doesn't mean that you have a personal relationship with them. Just because you know who somebody is doesn't mean that they know you. Well, since we coming out of Marsh Madness, let's do it this way. How many of y'all know who Zion Williamson is? <laughs> Now, how many of y'all does Zion Williamson know? Any of y'all talk to him last Thursday? He talked to y'all this year? You talk, he y'all had a phone call? Y'all been out to dinner? Well, maybe you don't know who that is, but anybody know who our, 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 our previous president is? President Barack Obama, anybody know who that is? How many of y'all talk to him this month? <laughs> I talk to him this year? If I've been out of dinner with him? So that means if he showed up, you would know him. For even, even Jesus says in Matthew 7, we got to understand that not everybody that calls on the Lord, everybody who calls me Lord, Lord, will enter into the 
the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of the Father. Jesus said, many will say unto me on the judgment day, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Haven't we cast out demons in your name? Haven't we done wonderful works in your name? And then Jesus said, I will, I will, I will profess to them, you may have used my name, but you may have used my name, but you don't know me and I don't know you. Depart from me, for I never knew you. Depart from me, you who work iniquity, you who practice and live in sin, who enjoy sinning against God, enjoy living in lawlessness. You, you know, he said, you know who I was, but you never wanted to sacrifice yourself so you could have a personal relationship with me. And even though you may know me, I don't know you. And even though you knew who I was, you didn't give me your life. Yeah, you didn't glorify me in your life. You weren't even thankful for me as your God. And you got caught up into yourself, what you wanted what's best for you, what you want to do, and what society and, and, and the culture uh, starts consuming and, and the evil world is self-consumed. This world is self-consumed. Everybody want to do what they want to do. Children doing what they want to do. Parents doing what they want to do. Teachers doing what they want to do. Leaders doing what they want to do. Officers doing what they want. And yes, even church leaders doing what they want to do. Society teaching you it's your thing. Do what you want to do. And the culture teaching you you only live once. Do what makes you happy. Forget everybody else. Don't make no difference how it destroys everybody else's life. Let's make sure you do what makes you happy. The devil is alive. And now we live in a selfish society where folk are looking out for number one. Doing what makes them happy. And our children are paying the price. Our children are paying the bill. Our homes are being destroyed. Our families are being destroyed. Our communities are being destroyed because of selfishness. Because of selfishness. Because of sin. The sin of selfishness. Why? Because selfishness is worshiping the creature instead of the creator. And it's all madness. Selfishness is madness. And today we live in a culture filled with violence, filled with crime, filled with shooting up, filled with gays, filled with drugs, filled with adultery, filled with pornography, filled with profanity, filled with destruction, filled with sin, sin, sin. And it's all madness. But we have to stop the madness in our own lives. Somebody shout stop the man. For God wants you to know something today. One thing in the text is very simple, but it's very profound. Can I teach this morning? Today's madness is a result of folk worshiping and serving the creature and not the creator. Today's madness is a result of mankind worshiping and serving itself instead of the maker. Church, you have a creator. Tell, tell your neighbor, you have a creator. Yeah, let me let, let that sit there a minute. You have a creator. You have been created. Anything
thing that has been created has a creator. Anything that has been made has a maker. And a creator creates what he or she creates, not so the creation can satisfy itself. The creator creates what he or she creates so the creation can satisfy the creator. A creation is designed to do what the creator created it to do. A creation is designed to produce what the creation, what the creator created it to produce. The creation wasn't created to satisfy itself. The creation was designed to satisfy its creator. Your car wasn't designed to satisfy itself. I'm a good car. I got it going on. I'm a car. I'm going to look out for my car. I'm going to look out for me. I'm a car. No, your car wasn't designed to satisfy itself. It was, a satisfy, it was designed to satisfy and serve its creator and who bought it. Your laundry detergent doesn't satisfy itself. Your dish detergent doesn't satisfy itself. Your laptop doesn't satisfy itself. They are designed to carry out the purpose and the desire of the creator. The Wright brothers desired that man could be able to fly through the air from one place to another and they designed an airplane an airplane doesn't, doesn't live for itself they function to carry out the desire of its creator and to help us get from here to there well guess what church you have a creator you have a designer now let me walk real slow through here you were not created for you you were created for him you were not designed for you you were designed for him you were not born into this world for you you were born into this world for him you were not born into this world to please you you were born into this world to please him you were not designed to please you you were designed to please him. You were not designed to satisfy you. You were designed to satisfy him. You were not born to worship yourself. You were born to worship him. You were not created to serve yourself. You were created to serve him. And when you die, when you leave this world, you will not answer to you you will answer to him somebody say to him stop the madness somebody say stop the madness the world doesn't revolve around you the world revolves around him and the source of all this sinful madness today is selfishness and selfishness is sin but I got a question to ask you why is selfishness sin because selfishness is self worship worship of yourself I gotta have mine I don't care what it does to you I'm looking out for number one I'm taking care of number one all of y'all can suffer as long as I got mine everything's all right the devil is alive selfishness is self-worship don't you make yourself your own God because God has a tendency to knock gods off their throne and you look around and say Lord what happened I don't know what happened you got too big and I had to go and bring you right on down 
selfishness is making yourself the focus of your worship, the focus of your service, the focus of your affection, the focus of your attention, the focus of your love. Oh, contrary to proper belief, it's not your thing. And you can't do what you want to do. Contrary to proper belief, you cannot do whatever makes you happy. Because what makes you happy may be sin. And God always judged sin. But God told me to tell you to stop the madness. You need to understand that you have a creator. You have a creator. You have a creator. You have a designer. And he designed you just the way he wanted you to be. So I got a question to ask. I wonder, oh Lord, you ought to ask yourself this question. You ask God this question. See, I wonder what God had in mind when he designed you. I wonder what would God had in mind when he created you. When God, when the creator created you, he gives his creation. When God makes something, he gives his creation everything it needs to carry out what the creator wants it to do. God wanted birds to fly, so he gave birds some wings. God wanted fish to swim, so he gave fish some fins. And whatever God wanted you to do, he put it in you so you can do what he created you to do. Whatever God created you to do, it's already in you. It's in you. He put it in you. And what you have to do is discover what God put in you. Birds didn't know they could fly. They had to discover it. And some baby birds had to be kicked out of the nest so they could discover they could fly. And when the baby bird is forced out of the nest, it's a crisis. It's scared. It's worried. But as the baby bird comes tumbling down, the baby bird spreads its wings and the baby bird begins to fly. Sometimes it takes a crisis. It takes some drama to pull out of you what God has put in you. Sometimes God has to allow a crisis in your life to wake you up, to wake you up and cause you to spread, to spread, to spread your ways. In this case, God will use what you've been through to bless you. Why? Because if the baby bird never experienced the crisis, they wouldn't know that they could fly. And if you would have not gone through what you went through, you wouldn't know what you know. You wouldn't be who you are. You have a creator. You have a creator. And everything he wants you to have, he's put it inside of you. And instead of living for yourself, instead of satisfying yourself, instead of pleasing yourself, instead of worshiping yourself, instead of serving yourself, ask the Lord, Lord, what did you have in mind when you created me? Lord, what did you have in mind when you made me? Show me what you had in mind. 
show me what you want me to do why because oh lord because hear me good the hardest the hardest thing there is to do is to truly accept and embrace who you really are. To accept and embrace who God truly made you to be. You are not what society tells you you are. You are not who people say you are. You are not who the news say you are. You are not even what some of your family members may say you are. No, you are not who this evil culture tries to program you to be. You are who God created you to be. You didn't come out the room talking crazy. You didn't come out the room all angry. You didn't come out the room cussing every time you open your mouth. You didn't come out the room drinking. You didn't come. No, you came out the room a blessed creation of God. Society and culture and culture and society try to mold you and make you what society wants you to be. You are who God created you to be. You're gonna be just like your you need to no, I'm gonna be who God says I am. Don't try to place your pain on top of me. I ain't got nothing to do with that. I'm who God says I am. Just because you mad with them, don't pour that anger inside of me. I'm who God. And when you listen, to this evil world, who by the world is going straight to hell. We end up worshiping and serving creatures. Satisfying creatures. Trying to change God's word to satisfy creatures. Make what God says is wrong, try to make that right to satisfy creatures. Make what God says is right, try to make that wrong to satisfy some creature. Start telling folk to do what God says and not do what satisfies the creature. Start telling folk not to do what God told us to do. You see, you see, we got to understand. For the Lord says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And enter unto his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless and bless and bless. Don't you dare listen to a creature trying to tell you it ain't worth all that. You ain't got to do all that. The devil is a lie. You are a creature and you are lying on the creator. I'm not going to die. I'm not going to deny the creator to satisfy no creature. No, we ain't going to do that. Now, now let me go back. There's nothing wrong with cheering for your team. Nothing wrong with celebrating their we. But can I tell you something? They creatures. <laughs> Nothing wrong with celebrating your favorite squad. But they just like you. 
They can't heal nobody. They creatures. Nothing wrong with celebrating them, but they didn't wake you up this morning. They, they didn't put food on your table. They didn't put clothes on your back. They didn't put shelter over your head. You have, you have you, see, see, can, can I tell you something? You have to pay to go see them. But you don't have to pay to go see him. All you got to do is call on the name of Jesus. And he'll show up in your circumstance. He'll show up in your situation. See, see, I'm, I'm try, I'm, see, 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 you got to stand. They didn't heal your body. They didn't guide the head of no surgeon. They need, to, they need somebody to guide the surgeon's head too. They didn't save your soul. They didn't make you whole. They didn't forgive your sin. Their sins got to be forgiven too. Matter of fact, they actually may have caused you to sin. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't take care of you when your loved one died. They didn't have your back. They don't even know where your back is. They didn't pay your bills. Matter of fact, they gave you a bill. Some of them won their game because of a miracle. But they aren't the miracle worker. I'm so glad I know the miracle worker and he knows me. I'm so glad I know the healer and he knows me. And he's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? He is my way maker, my burden bearer, my hand lifter, my mind regulator, my burden bearer, my bill, my bill payer, my chain breaker, my heart fixer, my friend to the friendless, my mother to the motherless, my father to the fatherless. He is my lily of the valley, my bright and morning star. And whatever I need, he will provide. And his name is Jesus. Jesus, Alpha and Omega. Jesus, beginning and the end. Jesus, the first and the last. Jesus, the best thing that's ever happened to me. He blesses over and over and over and over and over and over. Give him praise. Hey! We ought to stop the madness. Tell your neighbor, stop the madness. Stop the madness. Stop worshiping and serving creatures instead of the creator. See now, let me let me make some let me get some straight. Let me get this right. Nothing wrong with appreciating the creations. Nothing wrong with appreciating each other. Matter of fact, God told us to love one another. Look out for one another. And serve one another. But we are his creation. How many know you ought to appreciate your spouse? Appreciate your children. Appreciate everybody that God is sending to your life. Because he wants you to appreciate them. He wants you to be a good steward over them. Because if he didn't want you to have them, he would have gave them to you. The problem doesn't come in appreciation. 
Lord Jesus said it this way. If you love your father and your mother more than me. More than me. More than me. What do you mean? What do you mean, Jesus? See, you can love your mother, your father, sister, and your brother, but they can't save your soul. They can't save you. They can't heal you. They can't restore you. But you gotta love the Lord above everything. Love God with everything that you have. Nothing wrong appreciating the blessings God give you. But your worship, give them your appreciation, but don't give them your worship. Give them your love, but don't give them your worship. All worship, all glory, all honor, and all praise belongs to him. Belongs to him who woke you up this morning. Belongs to him who started you on your way. You must do what satisfies him, glorifies him, magnifies him, pleases him, honors him, serves him, blesses him. Because whenever we're satisfying ourselves and others, instead of satisfying God, we are worshiping and serving the creature instead of the creator. All you gotta do is pay attention, look around. I want you to think about it. Folks changing laws today to satisfy the creature. God says it's wrong, but you know, we got to satisfy the creature. Well, guess what? When you stand before God, <laughs> when, you sat, when you stand before God, the question would be, did you satisfy the creator? That's why you can't let nobody, nobody, no, no, nobody get between you and your God. I love my wife. And she showed up, love me too. Indeed. Come on. Yeah. But I ain't no kind of husband yeah. if I ain't serving the Lord. Because my commitment to God is what makes me the man that can take care of her. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Now, I love my children. Stand up, y'all. I love my babies. I love them. Yeah, hey, baby. But my relationship with God is what makes me the kind of man that can take care of them. I can't, I can't make them my God because then I start worshiping and serving creatures instead of the creator. Know that God, y'all can be seated. God bless you. How many know that God gets tired of watching us worship and serve the stuff He gave us? I don't have my keys on me. You got keys? You got keys in you? Thank you. Thank you. If I gave my son keys to a brand new truck, <laughs> listen, don't get excited. If I gave him keys to a brand new truck, 
Y'all with me? What he got? He got keys to what? Brand new truck. But if every time I needed him, he said, Dad, I'm washing my truck. Every time I call him, say, son, I need you to come help me. He said, Dad, I would, but I'm, I'm, I'm waxing my truck. And every time I had some, if I was going through a difficult time and I needed my son to help my back and he was washing my truck, after a while I'd be ready to do what? Take. <laughs> but Dad, I need to wait. He's just going to walk. <laughs> What's, what's my point? My point is this. God gives us a whole lot of trucks. God gives us a whole lot of things. God gives us a whole lot of creations. And some of us, we're so wrapped up in our creations that every time God calls us to do something, we're busy taking care of a creation that we're ignoring the creator. So don't, don't get upset and don't be surprised if he take the keys back. Cause, cause God ain't gonna have no other God over him. What's the point? What's the point? The world is going the way it's going because people are serving and worshiping the creature the creation and not the creator. So in your life, in your life, are you worshiping creatures? Nothing wrong with looking out for creatures, nothing wrong with it. Preach, I appreciate, I appreciate all, I love all of y'all. All of God's creation. We can't worship each other. Because uh -uh. guess what? There's going to be some time you're going to need pastor. And pastor ain't going to be able to come. Not because he don't want to come. He might not be able to come. But I don't care where you are. You can call on the name of Jesus. You can call the Lord and he will show up. And he will show up. And he will show up. So all the worship. So you appreciate the creatures and the creation God has given you. But you make sure all of your worship and your praise and your honor and your glory goes to creator. Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him praise. He's worthy. Come on, give God praise in the house. Let's all stand. There may be somebody here today.